Bitch! Hit it, boys! Okay, we've got a matchup of prestige bomb movies. Normally, we don't do things that have anything to do with each other, but a lot of bombs in this one. It's the highest matchup yet on Tomato Fights. 94, The Dark Knight versus Speed. Our guest is the great Jay Baruchel. Jay, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Hey, thank you very much uh, for having me. And I uh, appreciate the adjective. Uh, um, so thank, thank you very much. The the first question we ask all of our panelists is, isn't this a good idea for a podcast? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you're you're not wrong. Um, I I could tell even when you, uh, when Pete asked me to come on to it, I was like, oh, they're really high on this fucking thing. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea of being like, isn't this a great idea? And yeah, you answer, seem to think so. The answer being yes, you guys seem very excited about it. <laughs> It, it it's a it is it's a good idea though I get it that's a that's a very clear pitch so uh, congrats and uh, yeah get as much out of it as you can boys okay so we that's were... complete fan service yeah <laughs> just being like yeah you guys are way to go you yeah just just keep working at it definitely refine it I mean the the initial idea isn't always what it ends up being yeah, yeah but don't don't um you know. Just be be careful who you uh, be careful who you talk to. It's because it's a like 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 any like any good pitch. I think it sounds like new, but also like it's been around forever, right? Like that's a good thing. It's like like a you know. So um, I'm saying don't get fucked over. Uh, that, you know I, I don't know. Don't get. I don't know how you would. I don't know what podcast. Like, well, I'd what find a way. Yeah. Through. Yeah. Yeah. I I also think that there's an element of like nobody cares about us enough to try to fuck us over. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, hey, hey, I don't know that. I don't know that nobody cares about you. So, um, but yeah, we'll see. I give we'll us, see. I don't know what we'll see. Give us no. Give us a few minutes. You'll yeah, see. Yeah, exactly. You'll be yeah. like. Uh. Let's circle back to that. No one, no one cares about these guys. I did want to make at some point. I want to make a supercut of answers to that question of isn't this a good idea? And a couple of our guests have been like, yo, genuinely. When you guys suggested this, I was like, that's a great idea. How does this not exist yet? Katie Nolan had said like, yeah, you, you oversold it a little bit. Like you, you seem more excited about it than, than I did. So you putting the, oh yeah, you, uh, you are jazzed about it in there <laughs> will be fantastic. Excellent. Yeah, that would be a good one. Also, the entire sort of, uh, what are we at? How many minutes have elapsed that we've spent? Six minutes we've been talking about this, um, or four to five minutes. That Put all of that in the, uh, put all, all of these in the clip show. Yeah, I oh, mean, yeah. that's six minutes of absolute nonsense, and someone we've never met immediately trying to, like, tell us to feel better is actually very much in line <laughs> with the energy of the, the type of shit that Pete and I... Oh, yeah. uh, Good Put on out. you guys. Good, good on you. Well, well done. You think you think you you're thinking outside the box. Uh, is, is this a good matchup for you, Speed versus the Dark Knight? Because I mean, you're a member of the DC family, obviously big uh, comic guy, and I mean a human being who lived in the '90s. So you must have seen Speed. Like, does is does the the similar rating on Rotten Tomatoes surprise you at all, or are you into these movies? What's your experience? Yeah. Um, no, it doesn't surprise me. Uh, uh, yeah, because <laughs> also all sorts of people like all sorts of shit. I, I saw Speed in the theater uh, when I was a kid with my dad. Um, so that was like a movie that like, yeah, blew my fucking mind as a kid. Also because it was written by, uh, and this is where I'm going to like hockey Twitter. It was written by a fucking Canadian. Um, and like we, as you, as as you used the word insufferable before. Well, um, there's nothing more insufferable than a Canadian telling you who's Canadian. Um, and uh, Graham Yost uh, is. And what, oh, why that's particularly relevant, um, it, uh, aside from his like immediate place in like our kind of pantheon of heroes, um, is that his dad was kind of an important dude for film nerds up here so there's like a kind of a cool thing which is like all right so in ontario there's this like uh 
educational kind of channel called TVO, TV Ontario. And every Saturday when I was a kid, but like long before that, uh, there was this show called Saturday Night at the Movies, where this old fella called Elwee Yost would show like a classic movie um, and he would do like a fucking 101 about it. I think they might have shown two movies every Saturday, but but like he would sort of give you production history and anecdotes and all this stuff and why this is a movie worth watching. And, you know, he was someone that my mom loved. And so often Saturday night, this guy was in my house telling us like why movies are good. And then like his son grew up and wrote a movie. And I remember my mother saying like, so that's, you know, you grow up in a house with a, a guy that loves movies. You could become a you know screenwriter one day kind of thing and, and my parents are both huge fucking movie nerds so so that movie was like a bit of like i i definitely as a kid however old was it 94 94 yeah yeah so i was 12 so i definitely like imagine myself as uh, as graham uh, yost uh, uh at 12 arguably pr- probably the only 12 year old in the fucking country who was like one day I'm going to be Graham Yost. Um, <laughs> but, uh, um, but, but, um, but yeah. Uh, and I, and I saw dark Knight in the theaters too, which l- less of a cool story. I assume everybody on this fucking zoom did. Um, but, uh, but yeah, lots of explosions and shit in both. Yeah. That's, that's interesting that you brought up the, uh, the Canadian factor because we did have a conversation right before we started recording. You're the second Canadian guest in a row. And this is a very new podcast and if we get if we get another Canadian, we'll have more Canadian guests than American guests. <laughs> and part of the reason that we know that is because you know when you're talking to a Canadian because they'll tell you that they're Canadian. <laughs> Constantly. Constantly. We have to. We, yeah. we, we, sort of, we, sort of, we have to because there, there's like a kind of a, uh, a sort of uh, Western Hemisphere – anglo-centric uh, slurry that we get dumped into and if we and 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 for 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 every one of us there's 10 of you guys and so we we we, we kind of have to like it's we, we we fight for that shit when we can that that's why we're like the worst you know when it comes to like fucking the olympics and once upon a time the world juniors or whatever you know just because like or hockey literally the yeah. only yeah. thing in which we we were once upon a time ever dominant Right. This I had this question anyway, but it was irrelevant to this podcast. But now we're kind of on the subject. Did you fuck with the Mighty Ducks? Oh, I fucking hated it. I knew it. Yeah, and I and I like still do. Like I, you know, and and I. So it, it's it's hard though because I I, I don't I want to make it clear like I don't hate on people that love the movie like that. That's a legitimate sort of like earnest connection to a series of movies people grew up with those movies you know there's people out there for whom like they mean what the fucking goonies meant to me or whatever you know so like i can't hate on all that that's real as fuck um i just like always thought they were preposterous always and i still this is just like a dysfunction that i have that i'll never get over i like always think like there are so many things that americans can tell stories about that have like an international fucking brand why did they have to take yeah. hockey seriously man <laughs> I mean, like, I'm why so the glad fuck I is miracle a movie <laughs> like of all the fucking story like and so you know anyway so so um so so there's a there's a bit of that and and there's also the fact that i think the flying v would get you fucking killed you know and and so like and um <laughs> without getting into because this is not the time or place the the um uh progenitor the creator is that the word the guy anyway the, the sort of guy who started the fucking mighty ducks and i like <laughs> don't always get along super well oh that's stupid never mind but, uh, I, love that. Anyway. I wonder why <laughs> I, I wonder, yeah right i also love the idea of you like being out on the mighty ducks because it's unrealistic but you saw speed when you were a kid and you were like i want to be that guy who wrote this movie yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was um yeah fair enough that that's a that's a point yeah i don't have a good answer to that one you're you're, you're spot on 
it is a great point though that like the flying V is just like people taking turns like giving each other buddy passes. Like everybody receiving a pass in the flying V would get absolutely blown up. That that's it. And like when I meet someone from fucking England and like the only thing they know about hockey is the Mighty Ducks. And and so it occupies this like, you know, not not even like novelty place, like like side novelty sideshow fucking gift store place in their brain. And I'm always like, okay, so first things first, all those kids are in the fucking hospital. <laughs> like, like if they if they do that, they're all fucked, man. And like, anyway, I I much prefer um, Hardball, uh, starring Canada's Keanu Reeves, which ah. is basically the like baseball Mighty Ducks, almost exactly the same movie. Famously, yeah. no kids in that movie end up in the hospital. Oh. <laughs> I was just, I was cleaning something in the, no, I wasn't cleaning. I was looking for something in the basement the other day. And I, for some reason, was thinking of that movie. And I started, it's because I was singing, I love it when they call me Big Pop with like the fucking the tor- Biggie song that's in there. And then I was like, does that little kid die? Doesn't he fucking die in the movie? It, what was his name? Is it Little Sweet? G Baby. G Baby. That's right. G Baby. Yeah. That's right. R.I.P. Oh, fuck. What a bummer. Um, <laughs> all right. So we're debating Hardball and Simon Birch. Is that it? Yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. I like that you just gave the kid dying in uh, Hardball the same reaction that like Paul McCartney did when the press like jumped on him and they were like, John Lennon's been shot. What do you think? And he's like, oh, it's fucking drag. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what a bummer. Big bummer. Jeez. Yeah. Fucking bummer. That kid, Wish that kid was adorable. They don't. Was. They. they they put him on the fucking poster, I think. Mm-hmm. I believe he got the poster. Yeah, anyway. He got the poster and then some. Fuck, we absolutely chose the wrong movies. Um, I know. But... <laughs> no, no. I can I can speak on both. I have a lot of uh, big opinions about the Batman one. <laughs> Good. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Good. Uh, Great time to announce that we should start with speed. Yeah, we're going to start with speed then yes. uh, on, on that note. Uh, it is funny that... You brought out Graham Yost out of the gate because when he was pitching this movie, studios didn't want it because his initial script was entirely taking place on the bus. He said, everything's going to take place on the bus. And studios were like, yeah, we're not so hot on it. So he just did a rewrite and he's like, what if there's a bomb in an elevator in like the first three minutes? And then people were just like jumping over themselves to to do it. Which and, is which is interesting because like my recollection of Speed, I didn't remember any of the beginning parts of it. Like I started watching Speed and I was like, "Huh, I don't know if I've ever seen this movie in full." Because the only parts that I remember are on the bus and then at the end train. Yeah, yeah. Oh fuck yeah! I remembered it because I thought they looked so fucking cool. As a twelve-year-old boy, I thought their like SWAT gear was fucking sick. Like I, I, I was the first time I saw them have like a walkie talkie with like a throat thing. And, and I was like, Oh, that's wicked. You know, like, and I thought their like rifles looked sick. Like I was a big GI Joe kid. So like, yeah, they, they looked dope. So I was into it. And, and I remember, I remember there was like a joke that made me laugh, which was, I haven't seen it, you know, I guess I was, I don't know if I was supposed to watch it before this. I haven't in a long time, but <laughs> I, I, I remember there was, I was there not a joke where, um but he pushes the elevator down thing and then pushes it again and the guy beside him says yes you, you push it doesn't make it come faster or something like that he or he goes uh he like pushes it uh and the light was already on and so the guy behind him is like glad you pushed that one like otherwise the elevator wouldn't have known where to go because somebody had already pushed it and light was on and then like the elevator sort of like malfunctions and the guy behind him makes like a follow-up joke and he's like what'd you do right yeah yeah i huge huge uh uh, it it killed 12 year old me love it and love it and when i got suspended speed was what i went home and watched because i owned it on vhs too. well let's flesh out this story why'd you get suspended (laughs) I, I was, uh, it was in grade eight and, um, I was like the only kid on the honor roll that got suspended for fighting. And like, I was like super, I, I was small, 
but like I was always the same size as every other fucking kid until grade seven and eight. And I just like everyone like blew fucking past me. And then everybody thought I was like a like a genius kid, like a grade four that like it skipped a bunch of grades, and, you know, like and but anyway, so I would always keep getting into fights and like there was this kid, this like fat piece of shit who was making fun of my making fun of my friend Borer and Borer. He was uh, Iraqi and like, you know, that's a fucking hard thing to be for about 20 years in the U S and Canada, man. And like, and, and kid was like real hard on him and he kept fucking with him and saying just a bunch of racist stuff that I don't need to repeat. Um, and so I like had Borer's back and Borer was being super chill and like he could have kicked the fuck out of the kid and was just taking it. And I was like mad on his behalf. But then it it switched from me defending my friend to like this is a, this is like ninety six right so this is about I I would argue I'd posit this is the apex of the sort of uh, dis culture uh, mm -hmm. y y your mom stuff you know and uh, um, you're so ugly and et cetera et cetera Mr Personality was a big song at the time <laughs> by Gillette um, and so then it just became this fucking thing of us back and forth saying just horrendous shit to each other they just you know and then the whole class was there because the teacher had gone to the fucking staff room for something so it went nuts it was just the you know just a perfect storm and yeah and then we just started pounding the fuck out of each other and like the teacher came back and was like oh my god you know and then they sent us to, to the principal's office and the vice principal uh hilariously named uh, mr hogg uh, I, uh made us each write down what the other everything the other one said to us oh <laughs> to jesus yeah and then like it was one of these things where like he clearly hadn't done that since like 1974 based on his reaction because he was like <laughs> oh <laughs> like you know and then when like he called up our our parents he then like said i won't even i won't even say these things that these children said to you know and uh mortified right um but my mother knew that like if I fought a kid, it was probably a reason. And so when I got home, it was Friday anyway, and I'd only done like a period or two. And so it was like around lunchtime, I got home on Friday and, and she was like, so what happened? I told her, she's like, all right, well, what do you want to do? I was like, well, I don't know. I just bought speed. Can I go watch that? <laughs> was, okay, sure. So then I just like watch speed. <laughs> and then it was <laughs> That's awesome. Then it was that's, a, that's a much more noble than the reason that I got, uh, suspended in in middle school which was that i mooned a bus of ca uh, catholic kids on the oh, way to no. school ah yeah so <laughs> oh, no. i was i was much language. better I, I, I was language i got sent to the principal's office and when I, I got sent there often and when i walked in the principal was like why are you here and i said because teacher that sent me here is an asshole and i didn't realize the teacher had followed me there to make sure I went to make sure I went to the principal's office. So she was standing right behind me as it was one of those classic like movie things where you're like, ah, oh, fuck, they're right behind me, aren't they? So I was suspended. Yeah, I, I, I'd reckon that out of the three of us, which one of us got suspended for fighting? Pete and I would be like easy process of elimination. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. It's funny that uh, you mentioned the joke aspect of speed and that sticking with you. I want to say off the jump that I think that this is legitimately, whether intentionally or not, one of the funniest movies that I've ever seen in my life. It, there are so many funny parts of it. Had you Was this the first time you'd watched it? No, I'd seen it. Like, again, I'd seen it before, and I think that I'd seen it maybe not in full. Um, it was a big, I remember it being a big, big TV movie. Like, it was yeah. always on TV. Yeah, yeah. So I had seen parts of it, um, maybe never front to back. But I, I don't remember it being as ridiculous at points as it was but yeah, holy bet. smokes even the premise yeah, I was gonna of it say. is very funny like yeah bus go fast or bus go boom <laughs> yeah start starting with bus starting with bus <laughs> yeah. all things, number number one number two bus in la like which is like there's not a ton of them you know um it, it, you know but uh and and also it's like it's a weird thing to wade into because 
you know, public transportation really cuts across fucking class and ethnic lines in California, in LA in a massive way. So, so it's just, it's like, yeah, it's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting place to, to set a thing that's like stars to white people. The only reason they're there is like, he's trying to stop a bomb and her fucking cars broken or something. What is it like, you know, license revoked. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah. Ironically, oh, well. ironically, oh, because of speeding. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And 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 she's forced to she's forced to like consort with the poor's on her on her way to work, and uh, yeah, um, and just the I idea mean, of anybody in LA having to go over fifty miles an hour for the entire oh, time. Yeah. By the way, yeah, no shit. Yeah, that's that's insane. I okay. Here's my question: um, Does the action hold up, or is it in, or is it stupid now? Um. Uh, I think it I, I think it holds up. Yeah. By and large, it holds up. There's a there is a scene where they um, there's a lot of there's no more road or there's no oh, more track yeah. coming yeah, up. Well, like, that when it jumps the fucking missing segment right. of highway. So I love that in road trip, they can't jump what is essentially like a thin moat with a car. <laughs> but in speed, yeah. they can jump essentially like an Olympic pool in a yeah. bus. No, no shit. problem like <laughs> yeah, this filled, filled with people <laughs> yes this bus man this bus is a trooper because bullock no offense is hitting everything she yeah, she's hits, terrible she's a, a very bad driver like i yeah. don't believe quite that it's just you. because of speeding that she got it revoked. yeah no like, she, she killed clearly some, fucked some, other, some parked cars up and shit um yeah and she's real um I feel like she'd have given the cops some lips. She always, she always got something to say. That. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Um, but um, these civilians are, get get real mouthy. Yeah, yeah. She she always you know. Anyway, no. I mean um, the bus. The bus takes a a fucking beating. You're right. I mean like the jump itself. The fact that they were able to make that jump number one and like land the jump. The bus continues to function and drive over 50 miles an hour the entire time is preposterous. Yeah, yeah. And I believe that that's after there was already a bomb set off at the front of the bus. Yes. Yeah, the right. Bomb that gets set off at the front of the bus that's that true. kills the woman who tries to leave. Because of asshole who doesn't listen to the rules. She's yeah. like, hey, we all got to stay on the bus. And yeah, she, right. and then the second she sees another car pull up alongside, she's like, okay, this is my moment. Mm -hmm. It's pretty well explained to everybody. It's blowing up if you get off the bus. Right. So she decides to walk over to the exit of the bus and stand there for like six minutes to not only show she's trying to get off the bus, <laughs> but give whoever is going to detonate the bomb a lot of time to see somebody's trying to get off the bus. So obviously you don't root for any of their demises, but I mean, she could not have played that worse. Uh, my favorite thing about this movie though, so there's the beginning, there's the bomb and everything. You you inter you meet Dennis Hopper, who's just a fucking all-time bad guy. Dennis Hopper yeah. is a, yeah. a legend in this movie. Jeff Daniels, the whole nine. Uh, Keanu Reeves shoots Jeff Daniels in, in order to save all these people. So they have this big party for Jeff Daniels, like a big, like, you're the man, you got shot. Thanks, you're a hero party. And then the next morning, he's at the coffee shop, is Keanu, Jack, getting his coffee, talking with the barista and another bus driver about like, oh, big night out, pretty hungover, don't remember anything, blah, blah. And then this all starts. So when I'd seen the movie a million times, I never considered the fact that he is hungover for this That's entire true. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, he's like, he's cutting wires. He's like stealing cars. He's doing all these things hungover. I didn't think right. about that. Right. Um, I would argue what John McClane does in Died of the Vengeance is much more impressive for being hungover. <laughs> he gets blown out the fucking like sewer, and, and, you know, and, and all sorts of crazy. Same, same summer or a year or two apart, those two those movies. Those, very close. Um, very close. In fact, uh, Pete and I love fun facts. This is as fun a fact as you'll find. Keanu was obviously cast as Jack was not the first person that was offered the role. Huh. Stephen Baldwin turned it down 
because he felt it was too much of a John, the character was too much of a John McClane ripoff. Oh yeah, what a what a what a terrible burden. You, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you fucking idiot. <laughs> I don't I don't want to be in this. This is too much of a ripoff of a proven successful thing, you know. Oh boy. This sounds like a franchise. Uh. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't want that. Um well, um Jesus Christ, yeah. Uh, well, then though, would he be uh the cool guy in usual sus usual suspects is canceled, I guess. That's not a movie anymore. Yeah. yeah, fuck it. It's garbage now. Yeah, fuck him. <laughs> yeah, you made, your, you made your bed. You made your bed lie in it. Everybody did a bad job in Usual Suspects now. Yeah, um, no shit, boy, there's a bunch of bad re people. Anyway. Revised. I do like, uh, on the topic of Dennis Hopper, uh, I do like that in, like, his his motive for the bus thing was that his elevator plan got, got foiled. And there was a point after the elevator thing where he says to Jack, he's on the phone with Jack, and he's like, uh, I was working on this plan for two years. It's my life life's work. And I thought it, like that, that line came one <laughs> after the other. And I just found it very funny that he considered something that he worked on for two years, his life's work, life's work this guy yeah. that's like 65 years old. <laughs> yeah, it's true. That's a, that's a very good point. But I mean, um, yeah, that's a strange thing for it to have only occurred to him two years ago, but I'll say in fairness, I mean, think of, I don't know. You take the Beatles, you take Prince and like a lot, like a, a lot of people did their greatest things in a short period of time. It's sad that he didn't really realize his calling until what would he be? He'd be 63 years old yeah. or something. If Dennis Hopper is there, but like, I could say like a lot of people could say like their life's work came in. And I guess like in a way he may have encapsulated, we didn't know this at the point when he said that, but like the, the, the bomb thing is to rectify how he feels he was mistreated as a cop, hmm. which yeah. that would was his life's work. So maybe yeah. he looped that in with it. So yeah. I just thought it was very funny that he said that one after the other. I was like, this guy thinks that two years of work is like a life's a life's long worth of toiling. Yeah. And, yeah. And 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 why? He, why does he make it like a uh, like a game? Why doesn't he just blow them up? Like, why does he give them the chance to save themselves? Um, he, he definitely needs the, I think his, he wanted, he had two motives, actually three. One was $3.6 million, something like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, two, it's a ransom thing. Yeah. yeah. Two was being shown on screen, drinking Coca-Cola a lot. Oh, they, yeah, the movie right. really wants to do that. And yeah. three, he really does want like the repartee. He wants to, he wants oh, to he be able wants... to fuck with people. And yeah. he, I mean, he seems like a lonely guy. Yeah, he, he uh, just wants to have a visit. Right. Yeah. He, yeah, he wants to he wants to fuck with someone. He wants somebody coming after him. Uh, like between between his role in 24 and this, Dennis Hopper has mm. said Jack into a phone uh -huh. more times than anybody. <laughs> All of his lines are like, don't you see Jack? Don't you get he it, Jack? Says and he's like, Jack we so just much. <laughs> yeah. We just I don't fucking know you, dude. I don't see. I'm trying to save these people. And he's like, ah, what's the, you've always been like this, Jack. <laughs> he says Jack in this movie as many times as he says man in Apocalypse Now, an easy writer. Hopper's the fucking goat, man. I, I love Dennis Hopper. He's terrific. Um, yeah, you know, he definitely, there, there was a, there was a fucking, there was a, there was a place for him. Um, I, I, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's good at that shit. He's definitely real good at that shit. Wasn't there a thing with the gold watch? Yes, he yes. Cheap fucking fake gold watch. Yeah, so he got a he his gold watch was the uh, the watch that he got for his retirement as a cop after he got his hand blown off. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, he he wanted to include that as part of the the bomb thing, just as like a, a an act of revenge, I suppose, yeah. for the police. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He man, but there is a there's a little like, and the, when they first see the watch, they're like, wait, there's a shitty watch on here so like without even knowing like they're kind of making his point that yeah. like oh all he got was uh, a watch i love the scene when he's trying when jack is racing uh on the highway trying to catch up to the bus and telling the bus to stop and they're like what what what's this? there's a guy running what's this guy's problem they keep going he then steals a car 
and pulls up alongside the bus and is beeping and is waving his hands and no one knows what's going on. And one of the passengers just calmly says, that man sure has a hard on for this bus. (laughs) (laughs) Jeez, this guy's fucking obsessed with this bus. (laughs) Like a documentary. Wow. Then uh, there's uh, what's his name? Alan Ruck. Yeah, Alan Ruck. Alan Ruck. Oh is... shit, that's right. He yeah. is on. Yeah. He's on the bus. It's a loaded bus, Jay. It it's really a, is. It's a, it's a good and bus. The, the bus driver is the uh, night watchman in Seven at the library. Whoa. Oh yeah, that's right. Holy shit. Yeah, Man, it was Martin. a loaded bus, and Alan Ruck plays the most annoying guy ever. Holy yeah, yes. Sucks, eh? Yeah, he's uh, he's bugging. Well, by the way, quickly while we're talking about, um, oh, this person's in the movie. The guy that's pressing the buttons on the elevator is yeah. Patrick Fischler. Yeah, I, I, that's why I love rewatching movies because that guy's in everything: Mad yeah. Men, Silicon Valley. Everyone's seen him in a bajillion things. Marvel I love when you're rewatching a movie you've seen a million times, yeah. and you're like, "Holy smokes!" Like just for early in his career, just hey, you got to stand there, take some shit from a guy in a suit, press a couple of buttons. Yeah, Absolutely. Great absolutely love it um uh oh alan ruck yeah yeah so he's a tourist and he's saying like oh what a piece of shit what a fucking scumbag really (laughs) annoying tourist really annoying aren't they all yeah uh but when they do when they get everybody off of the bus they they pull up uh there's a the police pull up alongside they get a plank of wood and the everything's still going 50 miles an hour and the, you know, the old couple gets off the, the man, the woman, all these different people get off and they're just walking along. And then it comes to be Alan Ruck's turn to do it. And all of the L.A. people who have already gotten off the bus are giving him like all this extra encouragement as though them being from L.A. somehow like, <laughs> like makes them more. They're equipped. used to this. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. They're like, oh, this poor guy. Just Dude. another Tuesday. Right. This guy doesn't get this type of stuff in Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It definitely, that's the brand out there. Um, that, that seemed to be New York's thing for a long time in movies. Oh, it, yeah. Like, it, you know, this guy doesn't know a move it or lose it kind of yeah. stuff, you know. <laughs> um, yeah. Don't they do that in um, Dark Knight, uh, Dark Knight Rises? Doesn't like everything turn into like a, Oh no! It's I think it's one of the Spider-Man movies. I'm I'm getting them confused, but uh, someone's like raining chaos on New York City. Yeah. Oh, it couldn't have been a Batman movie because it's New York. Um, city like they're acknowledging that it's New York. Um, but someone Doc Ock or somebody is doing all this crazy shit in uh, in New York City, yeah. and like the whole city's like, I hate it. This is what we do when people fuck with I us. Fucking, and there's like, nothing I hate more than a movie that takes place in New York and a bad guy's about to do something and then like everyone has a gun or it's like, hey, you can't piss off New Yorkers. Like, you know, like if this fuck, I, I, I can't, I, I can't stand it. I can't stand whereas it. In, whereas when that happens in Boston movies, like the town, everyone in Boston is like, I didn't fucking see anything. I am never talking about this. I fucking swear to God, I'm not seeing a thing. Go ahead, sir. And everybody, Honestly. and like the big thing is like everybody in Boston movies is like, we got just gotta get the fuck out of here. We gotta oh, go yeah, somewhere John else. Thing. Yeah. He's like, the, we, gotta, the, we gotta, we gotta leave, and we gotta go to like Florida. Yeah, the plot. Yeah, John Mulaney's got a bit. The plot of every Boston movie is we've got to get out of Boston. <laughs> And then yeah. there's like one character that's Jeremy Renner in the town that's like, you think you're getting out of Boston? You're never fucking leaving Boston. <laughs> I do love the idea that like people who love to escape Boston usually go to Florida, like a place where famously nothing bad happens, nothing yeah. weird. Yeah. yeah, that's the not escape. A, not a, a consistent garbage fire, raging yes. garbage fire. You know, yeah. Uh, my favorite part of Speed is in like the first 30 seconds when they uh, when they're responding to the call at this hotel, I think it's a hotel or a business building where the, the elevators are. Yeah. The police car flies 50 feet in the air while yeah. going over like a hill, just responding to the call. They're not chasing anybody. Foreshadowing. Yeah, so <laughs> it just really sets the tone right off the bat that like this movie is preposterous. This movie gets air, bro. Yes. This movie yeah, gets yeah, air. Yeah, these vehicles get air. These vehicles are <laughs> driven by huge dicks. <laughs> um, it was initially called uh, Minimum Speed. 
Oh, and, wow. uh, no, it th- wasn't. Yes, for real. It was called Minimum Speed. Minimum Speed. What a <laughs> terrible name. I know. That does change everything. I like to think. <laughs> you guys like Minimum Speed? I, I don't like to think. See that. They're like pitching this movie to all these different people. They're like, all right, it's Minimum Speed, Minimum Wouldn't Speed. Wouldn't it be Speed Limit? Yeah. That's yeah, right. way easier. Speed, yeah. Oh, Speed Limit. I, I might like Speed Limit more than I like Speed. Yeah. But Minimum Speed. Speed Limit's not bad, but like Minimum, it's like, yeah. We have, we have two titles we're playing with. We don't know which one. Minimum speed or as slow as you can. Right. If you, yeah, if you, I, I feel like, and I'm, I'm no filmmaker, but I feel like you don't want to use any sort of, I guess minimum isn't a negative word, but you, if you're making something that's supposed like to uh, impress upon people action, using a word like minimum yeah, like is not yeah, exciting. Right, right. That's not an exciting name. But yeah, they're like, go. they're meeting with all these people. Minimum speed, minimum speed. Then one of the people they're meeting with. Yeah, it was is Justin Timberlake. Geez, that's exactly what I was Damn about it. to say. <laughs> yeah, they met with Justin Timberlake and Justin were, Timberlake was like, drop the minimum. Drop the minimum. It's clean. I was like, man, Pete's got something he's really excited Justin about. Justin Timberlake. That it's, that's a social network joke where he tells uh, where he tells oh, Zuckerberg I to lose sorry, the, yeah. the. OK, yeah, Pete I know. Pete and I were just yeah, racing yeah. to make that exact same <laughs> joke. But yeah, minimum speed uh, would not have worked. Uh, I Very love cool. that. Um, they shoot the messenger like crazy in this movie. He's on the bus to save these people. And every time he gives them any sort of news or update on anything, they get so fucking mad at him as though he's like the person that has the, the bomb on there. Like yeah. he tells them a bomb that there is a bomb. They flip out on him. He tells them there's a gap in the freeway coming up in two miles. And the guy, one of the guy goes, oh, this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah. Fucking speed is a cab. Fucking minimum, minimum <laughs> speed. Uh, minimum speed uh, is a cab. <laughs> they, uh, the most ridiculous, there's a lot of ridiculous things in this movie. You ask like, how does the action hold up? Yeah. The weirdest or the most ridiculous part is when they slide him under the bus oh, to work yes. on the bus as though he's a oh, mechanic. Oh, that's right. And everything's still going 50, mi- uh, 50 miles an hour, and he is still hungover. <laughs> that's where he keeps saying, fuck me. He says, yeah. he swears, he's, he, his go-to swear in that movie and in that movie only is fuck me. <laughs> I remember I said that once in grade nine, and this girl said, what are you, Keanu Reeves and Speed? <laughs> Burn. I love it. I love that uh so, that idea being like a question to a girl, like, hey, fuck me? Hey, what are you, Keanu Reeves and speed? Get out of here. Yeah, what what school did you transfer to after uh never yeah, being able to come no. back? Hey, why is it why I used it in anger? I stubbed my toe or something and said it, and then uh yeah. Um yeah, that's insane. That's a that's a ridiculous. I bet it looks cool, though, that scene. Yeah, but it, that doesn't even mention, like, the most ridiculous part, which is that he loses the, like, the little cart thing, the little mechanics yeah. cart, and he ends up staying under the bus by, like, stabbing a screwdriver into the gas tank, that's and right. that's what keeps him, like, locked onto the bus. Famously, that can't cause an explosion <laughs> right. at all. Yeah, right. That's, uh... Just introducing yeah. gas to this equation. Even- uh like Robert De Niro and Kate Fear used his like fucking belt and like a moving cable or some shit. Like, a, you know, like he, had, he was literally tethered to the bottom of the thing. Um, most predictable death in movie history is Jeff Daniels dying in the house when oh, yeah. they find the guy's house yeah. and they say, all, all we know about this guy is that he rigs everything he's ever touched with a bomb. Yeah. Let's go inside his house. Yeah, so they go into his definitely. house. Well, that was... That was the summer of bombs. There was like a bunch of bombing movies. Really? That, like, it became part of like, I don't know. I, am I a bit older? I'm, gonna, I'm 39. You're a couple years older than me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So every once in a while, there's like a, a thing that like hooks the, the zeitgeist in, or, or the, the consciousness in a way like, you know, the, it was serial killers for a sec. Right. And, and it was around the same time period to, to actually um it was snipers for a sec too uh, but there was a period where uh the collective consciousness at least on this side of the world was obsessed with like um bomb makers and there was speed uh blown away and uh the specialist uh where the bomb maker's a good guy um where it's it's uh, Sh- uh, sylvester stallone and sharon stone and he's like a hitman 
but he only kills bad guys and he only kills them with explosions. He only is like it's not like it's not for like cleanliness sake, like the most like, craziest, biggest fucking explosions ever, but like they turn everything in that movie into a bomb. Every cup on a saucer is a bomb. Every like aquarium is a fucking aquarium bomb. Yeah, anyway, it's just a thing that was like a weird fetish. And I and I and I don't know. I would love to see if anybody did their homework as to like why the fuck that became an obsession for a sec. And and is it connected to I bet you it is to like Oklahoma City. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's where, where my mind thinking. went. Yeah. And and the first uh, World Trade Center shit, right. right? Like, and you know, and certainly like where I grew up, which is I don't know that this is something that makes its way down to you guys, but like, it was Montreal is like one of the only places in North America where like bombing isn't like a thing of note because like when I was a kid, it happened twice a year. Every fucking year, there was some place got bombed. And like when my parents were kids, it happened even more. And like when my parents were kids, like we had martial law in Montreal in 1970. And that was the, the prelude to that was a decade of like 60 bombings a year, like for almost, you know, like for almost 10 fucking years. And then when I was a kid, it was all the bikers. Bikers would bomb each other's bars. So every single year there was like multiple just firebomb exploding wow. in restaurants across the fucking city. Um, but anyway, I digress. Dude, I mean, I... I want to do like a, a a thing on fucking Montreal in the night. I was listening to a, a show recently with uh, the guys from Chromio and they were talking about their upbringing in Montreal. And I've been to Montreal a fucking bazillion times. And I was yeah. like, holy smokes, there is that is such a fascinating city. Like there's weird so much that place. Weird, I, weird, weird fucking place. Uh, I adore it. But yeah, it's it's fucked. Like it's still by far the most crooked city in, in, in North America. You know, like I, I, and that's a continent that has like large swaths that are just controlled by like the fucking cartel. Like like they, our, our city is still like absolutely. Um, I'll, I'll put it this way. If there's a restaurant or a bar in my in Montreal and it's open, it pays protection money. It has to. That's just the fucking way. It, it's still the 30s. It's still like Al Capone shit in Montreal. Jesus. But anyway, um, yeah, I bet you, I bet you there's like, there, there is like a, like a thesis to be made or at least an essay to be written about the connection between like bomb shit in, in American cinema in, in the like mid nineties and like bombings as part of the like news you know, headlines oh, yeah. on the sort of tip of people's tongues at all times. Yeah, and, and, and think of, uh, obviously, like, after 9-11, how much, yeah. like, Shit. how much the arts changed and what a, I don't like to say market because that sounds like, it, it just fucked when you're talking about something that killed bunch of people, but, like, there was, like, a real market for no, that type of shit it. afterwards. No, yeah. It informs it. It can't not, right? Because, like, that's where you go to... Even if you're just going for escapist shit, you go to the movies to kind of effectively get your kind of cultural willies out, right? Like it's 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 where you're allowed. It's a safe place to have your nightmares, and it's a and, and to unpack shit. And 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 even if ultimately it is just a product, and you're just a consumer, it's it's a thing. It's a it's a place to go put some shit, right? Like and again, it's a like. All this, the stuff that applies to like talking about fight hockey fighting and why we go and why we dig that and what it does to us, blah, blah, blah. Same reason we go to like, you know, see this shit, right? Like, I'm, I don't want to get too annoying here, but like, you know, F Freud talks about the fucking death drive, right? That, that each of us has, you know, this, this inherent inclination to live and survive, but we also have an inherent inclination to destroy ourselves to go back to where we came from. And he says, this is why we go and watch scary shit and, 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 and live kind of like surrogate deaths and, and play with that because it's a thing that we want that, you know, the same way that like, even if every part of you knows that you shouldn't and you don't actually want to, when you're in a skyscraper, you're like, I kind of want to just break this fucking window. Like, you know, that there's like a tiny minority <laughs> yeah. part of your brain that has an inclination to do something awful to yourself. Right. And I, and I, and I think that that explains the entire like genre of fucking thrillers and shit too. 
dude. I mean, well put. I mean, bringing Freud into the mix. Yeah, I did not expect that. If he did, like, yeah, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta be honest with you. I did not have any notes on Freud when I was watching Speed. <laughs> I had, I had a couple, but you, you mainly hit them right there. <laughs> I, I don't want to just rehash everything. Uh, they do tie in a love story, and when we're talking about awards for this movie, it won um, best Does sound. That work? Does that shit work? Does the love shit work in it? Does the then- so that's my Not big really. question. They, they were they were nominated for or they won best. Uh, so they they won uh, best on screen couple at the MTV Movie Awards. Yeah. I was gonna say the Academy Awards. This movie won. No, and I was like, no. fuck it. Let's get to the interesting stuff. And Hopper um, won best villain too. Hopper won best villain at that same fucking. MTV. Oh, did he? Yeah. Uh, well, th- that that's fair. Uh, they were nominated or they won best on screen duo. Uh, Bullock and Reeves were nominated for Best Kiss and lost to Lauren Hawley and Jim Carrey in the other uh, Jeff Daniels movie that was out that year. Holy fuck, what yeah. a year for Daniels. Yeah. Yo, yeah. this is, Damn. dude, yeah. this is some like Joe Pesci early 90s shit where you watch Goodfellas and you're like, when when did he do Goodfellas? Then you look it up and you're like, this was the same fucking time he was doing Home Alone. Holy wow. smokes, Pesci. Wow, is that true? I believe so. Uh, let's see. Wow. I can. Yeah. Uh, that's fucking crazy. But that's yeah. hilarious because like b- both of those things, like the, the Pesci examples, complete opposite ends of the spectrum. Also, the Jeff Daniels thing, complete opposite end of the spectrum with this movie. And well, basically any movie that Jeff Daniels has ever done and then Dumb and Dumber. Yo, OK. Hey, well- so. This is kind of the only action movie also he's ever done. Like, yeah, I, that was actually one of my notes that it's very funny that Jeff Daniels is like a, an, in an action role and it just seems very weird. He, okay, so Jeff Daniels did both Speed and Dumb and Dumber in 1994. Wow. Joe Pesci did both Goodfellas and Home Alone in 1990. Wow. And in a three-year span, he did... Home Alone, Goodfellas, and My Cousin Vinny. Vinny so right. early 90s, Pesci had that ass. Damn. That was Joe Pesci's time. Short game. Gra- Graham Greene is still, uh, Gra- Graham Greene's st- still sore that Pesci won the Oscar for fucking, because uh, I think he won for, did he win for My Cousin Vinny? Um, he had to have, right? I, well, I know to- Tomei obviously won yeah. for my cousin Vinny, but uh, let me see. He didn't fucking Pesci won an Oscar somewhere in that in that. Yeah, run. he. I think I think he won Best Supporting for the Goodfellas. same year that Graham Greene was nominated for Dances with Wolves. Oh, okay. Um, I do know that Joe Pesci won an Academy Award and gave fittingly for him. He gave the shortest Oscar uh, acceptance speech ever. That's right. That's he right. Up and yeah. he, I, I believe he said. Uh, like it's truly my honor, and then yeah. left. Yeah, like he didn't when break you, stride. When you say fitting for him. Is that because he's short? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Pete had said short king. Yes, Pete. yes. I, I, I'm allowed to say it because I have Pete. He's one of he's one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> I claim him. Uh, also, Cole Caulfield, which we won't talk about. Oh yeah. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> yo. Great. Yeah. What a, what a mess, eh? Dude, yeah. I got, I got I got lots of mileage out of the gif of you and Anakin Slade during the playoff run though because <laughs> I so I, in a past life I covered the Bruins for a long time and we were always like making trips up there and everything. So yeah. we were introduced to like the whole Anakin Slade universe and everything. So I love that fucking video yeah. and during that stretch run where like a bunch of Boston sports media people just like decide they were like Canadians are a good, like the Canadians are the best story here. Yeah. Like fuck you. We're rooting for the Canadians. I know it's really crazy and nice. Yeah. Thing to see. It was like, so we knew it was legit. Like that's the thing. Like I try to explain it to people. Cause like I fucking can't stand the Bruins, but I, I like, I, I legit like hate them in a good way. You know, like like right. the, the the Leafs are just that. a fucking mess, man. Yeah. Like, and I and like I'm like rooting to hate them. Like, I want to hate them, but I just they're just a ridiculous. It's just a fucking dumb embarrassment. And like the, the the Bruins like make me mad. The Leafs never make me mad, man. Like like I fucking can't stand them. Don't get me wrong, but like the, the Leafs have never been a threat. And and my whole life the Bruins are a threat. And so like I I. So I'll just, I'll, 
I can't, I can't put it to you. I can't put it any, any better than this. So like when I, I was doing a play that, that, that run, that playoff run where the Leafs fucking really shat the bed against you guys. 2013. That game where they were leading or well, whatever, three or four, nothing. And, and, and then they just fucking big, like what they just by wasn't it three, nothing or four, nothing. It was, it was, two, it was two to one going into the third four period. One, that's right. Claude put Sagan on the top line, which is all anybody ever wanted. And they got scored on, on their first two shifts. So yes. it was four to one. <laughs> so we, <laughs> So I was doing this fucking play in Montreal and, and I think that was the year that we got swept by the fucking senators. And it was like, um, the worst, the, the, like, I, I, you know, the shittiest possible way to go out. And, and, um, and I remember all of us being bombed, but being like, at least the Leafs aren't going to make it through. And I remember that fucking day, we like, Came, it was intermission and it was like a I think it was like a it was a bad night it was like a bad show with a shitty crowd and we came down the intermission and the Leafs were up and we were all like fuck <laughs> like we were everybody like there's no and there's no Bruins fans in there I, it's a weird thing it's just like if we're not going to be there the fucking Leafs certainly can't like Bruins fine let them go they win Stanley Cups they're a normal team like everybody else but the fucking Leafs can't do anything you know and and um and I would rather the Bruins win something than like fucking Arizona or some shit. And so like, but by the way, for them, the Leafs to then like do the Leafsiest fucking possible thing. And like, anyway, I, my, my point is you guys, I, I have a begrudging love for, for the Boston Bruins. Yeah. I feel the same way. I mean, like I've always said that uh, sports and hockey, especially, way better when there's hate involved yes and like i i want the canadians to be good yes because i want to hate them yes like there's nothing worse than just feeling like one side of a rivalry no, is irrelevant sucks. oh it dude yeah. The, yeah the least fun um the least fun i had covering the bruins was like 20 i think it was like 2012 ish yeah. When the Canadians just sucked because yeah. 20, the 2010-11 season, yeah. that would be like we yeah. had the, the all the Pacioretty shit, obviously, but before like the before the climax of the Pacioretty yeah. shit, yeah. But, like the, the couple of games before when yeah. he scored in overtime and then skated by Chara and just fucking and threw fucking, him down. Yeah, cross checked. Greatest thing in the world. <laughs> like I, I loved all that shit because there was they were worried about each other. Yeah. But then right. when, when it became like okay, the Bruins have arrived now and then maybe the Canadians will catch up at some point. I was like, well, that's no, that's no fun. <laughs> yeah, no, agreed, agreed. And I, and I, and I always like it best when you guys are number one and we're eight. Uh, that 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 always seems to bode that, well. Yeah, that did it. work. Yeah. Um, but we're um, no, we're 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 an absolute fucking, we're a fucking mess, man. Like it's, and it was always going to be that way. What's crazy though is like, and it's it's. It is insane to over, you, you, you'd think you can't overemphasize the presence of like two players like, yeah. on that fucking team. Because I, 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 now, obviously we miss Dano and shit, but I'm saying like, I think if Shea and Terry are playing, we're not this fucking bad, man. But anyway, that's a different conversation for a different podcast. I love this so much. This is like, this is like the, the 13 different types of podcast Pete and I have done over the years, currently <laughs> all combined. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. just need to talk about depression for like an hour and then yeah, we will yeah, check. Yeah, fine. <laughs> we will have checked. That's, that'll get, that'll, that'll hit, hit Actually, for the cycle. The only thing we haven't done of the shit we usually do yeah. is like, we haven't talked about like something that you did. Cause we talked, we, we talked about like man seeking woman. That was a, that was an early staple of oh, our, cool. uh, podcast uh yeah the, the only thing that we didn't do is like talk about jay bear <laughs> <Right. laughs> <Shit. laughs> um, my last speed note uh and then we can move on to the dark night my last speed note is that they spend about 90 percent of the movie trying to protect everybody and like trying to to really keep everybody out of danger the best that they can and then the last 10 percent is that they put everybody in danger just trying to save each other 
Yeah. Like they, oh, yeah. they, it, as soon as it gets down to just Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock, everybody else is fair game. They, they drive the bus. Well, I guess they don't, they don't, they don't themselves drive the bus, the train. but they, no, no, no. They drive the bus and they get off the bus and the bus drives into a plane, At the a airport. gigantic yeah. oh, plane. Right. They yeah. send the bus into the airport. Yeah. They yeah. get the bus no, into the airport. No people then they abandon there. it. They abandon it. They're just like, wherever it goes, it goes. It drives into a plane, which I don't know if they they never address if there's anybody on the plane, but they are taxiing a plane on the runway. Oh, wow. Not, it's it's going somewhere. It is an it, active plane. Yes. They show um, I, I don't the, the plane is not on after the bus runs into it. A guy who was throwing luggage onto it runs away, which I think is supposed to tell you. It was okay. It was safe. But oh, I'm like, because he got out. Everyone right. else on the plane must. But, have he's gone out. Right, exactly. but if he's putting luggage into the plane, that means that Pretty there are people on the plane that need T- luggage. Typically, yeah. typically the people get on and then the luggage. So yeah. You are, and the entire plane explodes. Yeah. Uh, what bugged me, and this helps answer the question of does the love thing work? I hate that they introduce a love story into this with essentially twenty minutes left to go. Yeah. Because no this, this whole movie. There is no chemistry. Like the last thing you think about this entire movie, which is impressive for an R-rated movie, yeah. you don't think about sex one yeah, time. Right. No. Yeah, this right. whole mo- Jeff Daniels in the beginning gets really drunk and is like, "I'm gonna go have sex." I'm like, "I don't think you are." But that's the only time the entire movie that you're thinking about love or people getting together. Yeah, it's two extremely hot people. You have Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock in their prime, and but like, they're busy, they're right? Yeah. yeah, there's yeah. never a, any like downtime to be like so. Yeah, bigger, What's your situation? Bigger fish to fry. Totally. Like, yeah. And the only thing that you know about this person, if you're Keanu Reeves, is that she has a suspended license. <laughs> yeah, that's about it, eh? Yeah. But um, they... And then they clearly put that in there because they thought that had to have it. And they probably were trying to tee up that fucking sequel that he bailed on that, that I also saw in the theater. What? You yeah. have seen? Okay, so this has... Uh... So for this podcast, I just go on Rotten Tomatoes and just search random movies and click around and put them all into a database so we know which movies have which score. Speed 2 Cruise Control has the lowest score I've encountered, which is a four. Oh, a four, eh? A four. And that is 90 whole points (laughs) below its original. Yeah, Yeah, and and Keanu bailed on this. Everybody else came back. Uh, Keanu bailed simply because he just was like oh my god this, this is terrible there's no way this is good gonna be good um and and it wasn't and 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 it sucks because like there was a period there where jason patrick was on was a movie star like we watched the lost boys on halloween and i was like fuck me man like he was so he was so good like and i and i you know i i asked the girls in the room i was like is it He's just a good-looking guy, right? Like, yeah, no shit. Look at his fucking perfectly <laughs> symmetrical face. I was like, yeah. So, you know, it sucks. And he's a really good actor, man. He was good in Sleepers. Was just again not a good movie, but yeah. Um, Speed Two sucks. I remember hating it. Um, well, it's a dumbass concept. It's a boat. How <laughs> fast can a boat go? Was, yeah. And like, and like a boat has the ocean. Which seemingly would make yes. it easier to, to go with speed. There's somewhere you could go if you had right. to. And 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 also like um the entire I remember as a kid, I was being so mad that the whole thing was shot so fucking shaky and handheld. And I and I was like aware that the director was like a cinematographer. And it's so like I knew he was like trying something out. It didn't fucking work at all. That have you ever seen it? No, I haven't. Yeah, you're you are you are not missing any um the director Jan de Bont by the way which uh, this really made him a this made Keanu Reeves an action guy I believe he had not he was not doing action shit before this he was really just kind of like Bill and Ted was uh was what what he was coming off of but this got Jan de Bont going he did uh Twister a couple of years later and so this was I mean as action thrillers go like I I do consider this pretty close to elite for certainly for its genre like this is one of the the great action thrillers i think that it's like exactly what you want in a in a popcorn movie like it's it's a great great popcorn action movie where like the action is really good and at points 
The movie gets extremely stupid and it's fun to laugh at. Like, it's just a very, it's a very, it delivers on a lot of the things that I want when I just go to like turn my brain off and watch a movie and like it, it holds up. Yeah. I do have one last note. Um, she gets all horned up for him because they're on the train at the end of the movie and they can't get out. They can't stop the train. And he's like, there's no way we can stop the train. And she says, so she's uh, handcuffed to the train, has a bomb vest on. And she's like, oh, okay. Well, shit, if you have the key to the handcuffs, like, let's get off this train. He says, I don't have the key. And he decides, he says, I'm going to stay with you. And she is so in love with that. And is like, you are stay. You stayed for me. You stayed for me. And I'm like, where else is he going? He can't, you can't get off a speeding train. Yeah, plus he's a cop. Like he's been here the whole time. Like this, he's, just, he's just doing his fucking job. You think, yeah. Yeah, the, the, there's no option for, oh, no. I'll get off at the next stop or anything. Right. It's like you're speeding in a subway going up a jillion miles an hour. You can't that just- tells you how low her fucking standards are. Oh yeah. And then, yeah, I, I, yeah, the last 20 minutes, they have two scenes where they fall on top of each other and each time say like, oh, I don't know, relationships that start uh, with, tr- with like uh, in a chaotic situation never last. First of all, what the fuck kind of line is that? <laughs> if- yeah, right. And uh, says who? Where's the math on that? Yeah. And who at the <laughs> beginning of any relationship has ever said or like on a first date has ever said like, ooh, well, anything that starts with whatever ends up with whatever. Like, no, she's never... She's never played the game. She's a fucking stats nerd. Like, <laughs> what a bunch of coursey bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Just, oh man, she's all about. This was actually called Minimal Fenwick initially. <laughs> and she said, what about just what about just speed? I did love the Dennis Hopper we're line like, at the end. Jack, we're looking at the usage charts now. Uh, <laughs> Expected goals four or eight. Not great, Jack. <laughs> Not great. Expected goals. Uh, I did love the Dennis Hopper line, uh, speaking about, uh, you mentioned like how poor people kind of get like thrown under the bus in this movie. Yeah. Uh, he says, pun intended. <laughs> oh, Hey, not oh, even, nice. even no, no, I wasn't yeah. intending that. Well, uh, Je- uh, Dennis Hopper at the end of the movie says, uh, poor people are crazy. I'm eccentric. <laughs> Jesus, because he gets called uh, he gets called crazy by Jack and he's like, poor people are crazy. That sounds like me, like defending myself in my early 20s. Like, <laughs> no, uh, blah, blah. People are annoying. I'm eccentric. Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. Uh, but all in all, I, I think that's like a hard earned 94. I'm, I'm glad it has the, the rating it does. I, I am surprised, though, that it got a 94 based <laughs> yeah, on me too. I'm surprised that as many people and critics liked it at the time. Like, that's why I'm surprised that it got a 94 because we're not talking about audience score. Critics are usually pretty hard with movies that are sort of like as brainless as speed, not, not, disparag- not disparagingly to say that, but like- I don't, I don't know that critics are that hard. I think that's what people think they are and that's what they're supposed to be. Like, you know, and, 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 and actually to your, maybe back then they might have been, maybe back then they might have been. Um, certainly in the last 10 years, I've seen like, like what is Avengers Endgame rated on that fucking website, man? Like, like I'm curious as to like, but at least, at least that's like part of a bigger thing. Like, so you go in with a sort of like a, you, you're able to contextualize it in like the grand scheme of things speed is on it it lives on its own you know fittingly uh avengers endgame j is a 94 (laughs) so exact same so so here you so so fine even if every one of those people saw every other avengers movie like by no metric is that like i i'm gonna get a lot of hate uh uh yeah, it's not a good fucking film. Like, and and even if you love it, even if people loved it, it should have a 50% fucking thing. Like, like, like I 94 is like Lawrence of Arabia and like, you know, um the sting and fuck it, like, like, you know, when when you when you when you go that hard and that high 
on shit. Like I just kind of, to me, I'm like, you sort of forfeit the term critic and, and, and you're a fan, I think. Like I, I, I what do you, so what, if, if, if that gets a 94, what are you giving fucking 40 to? Like, you know, like what sucks to you? You know, what does it have to be? You know, I'm curious, but, but, um, but yeah, I am amazed that it's 94%. <laughs> Dude, that is exactly like literally exactly how I feel about music criticism these yeah, days right. where like, are you, there's no critiquing going on. And I hate, I use this example all the time. It sounds like I'm beating up on this person. Like the fact that Taylor Swift has put out a couple albums now that are just very, very simple things that we've heard a million times. And it is received as this is like very, very good. This is like musically, this is high nineties. This is album of the year type of stuff that I'm like, then what do you think of Steely Dan then? If this is like 95 is Steely that's Dan 600? That, yeah. that, that's the thing. And of course there's a place for everything. And yo, if you love it, if you legit love it, like, cause I am, you know, here's my crazy shit. I put the fucking Snyder cut of Justice League beside Lords of Arabia. Like I legit love it. I, I love it that much. I, I sincerely do. I don't think, I don't think most people that 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 voted to get that 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 you know that reviewed the, these movies so favorably to the point that they got ninety four percent. I can't imagine they actually love them that much. There can't be that many people that think Speed is an almost perfect film. There can't be that many people that think Speed is as good as Raiders of the Lost. Well, yeah. In fairness, that's not that's not that's not how Rotten Tomatoes works. So it, it means that like 94% of critics liked it or found it favorable. Correct. Of the But yeah, but that is basically, what's Raiders of the Lost Ark on there? Raiders of the Lost Listen, Ark. Listen, and before we find that out, like I understand that Rotten Tomatoes is not a perfect- No, 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 uh, I'm not shitting on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, oh, look at that. Raiders of the Lost Ark is a 95 on Rotten Tomatoes. Okay. So 1% so, better. I'm going to add so that to, to the my point. Like I'm not shitting on Rotten Tomatoes, and I and I'm not shitting on um, aggregators or math. I'm just saying I can't imagine. Like I buy that. I believe that 95% of people that reviewed Raiders of the Lost Ark think it's a fucking sick movie. Think it's four stars or what is it? Three stars or better? Four stars or something better? like that. Yeah. Yeah. I can't imagine that many people gave Speed three or four stars. Yeah, that's that's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, yeah, I agree with that. That, that makes sense. So uh, are you much of a tomato head? Like, do you know if, if someone asks like, hey, oh, well, yes, what, what, what's, uh, hey, hey, Jay, I, I think I've seen you in something before. Uh, what What's your most favorably reviewed uh, film? <laughs> I don't know any tomatoes? of those. I don't know the tomato scores for any movie I'm in. I only know them for the ones I directed. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, and, and wrote. Um, and it's like. So uh, you only care about yourself. Yeah, correct uh, <laughs> you don't need to call them up uh, um uh but uh but yeah no it's a, it's like the oscars it's a thing that i simultaneously think is a work like a horrendous piece of shit that's indicative of nothing that i would also die to have love me right and so yeah. so so for the first like my i made a horror movie called random acts of violence and when it came out I watched my tomatometer score. Like, so for the, for the first like few days, we were 90 something. And then I watched it drop down to 80 and then 70. And, and then it now, and it's now stayed at 54. And, and, and I had always said though, that I would want to make a movie. Like, if you don't like my movie, I hope you hate it and you hate me. Like, I want to fuck up your day and like you, you, you like I shouldn't have a right to make movies. I want you to be there mentally. Like, you know, I, 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 I because all the things I like, things that I'm most passionate about are that like I, I love fucking Snyder and as many people love him as hate him, man. And people hate his shit with a passion. Right. Like and and so there's like a few things like that. You know, there's a movie called Waiting for the Barbarians. That's like 50 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, with Johnny Depp and Pattinson and Mark Rylance and, and like that's a 50% on Rotten Tomatoes. I fucking loved it but I can also see why just as many people as got the reaction that I got from had you know with had to it would hate it so that tells me they made a decision they made a choice they weren't just trying to cover their fucking ass right you know yeah. 
They went for something. Hmm. They yeah, like they stood went. for something. They, correct. Yeah, and I, I understand that. I think that like a popular way of thinking is like, well, I would rather have somebody feel strongly about me one way or the other than think that like, that then just be like, okay, whatever, and make and me be forgettable. No, I, I said to people if I made a movie that they watched on the airplane, I would kill myself or like, you know, <laughs> like that. Like I, I, I don't want people to fall asleep. Like I want my narrative to be like. Um, offensive or compelling like, polarizing I, but, but yes you have to you have to you have to feel it and you acknowledge it and and and, and i get a re, i have to get a reaction out of you if i if i get dismissal or i get or or i create fucking wallpaper or i create a background for you i, I i'll never make it like i would never make a movie again oh yeah i mean interest is of course subjective but i think the the, the worst fear at least like Personally, like my, my worst fear is being uninteresting. Not to say that like I always have always want to be like no 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 or anything, but like I don't I don't want to just be I don't want to do anything that's like ah, bland, forgettable. I don't want to do something that already exists that there's already a, a spot for, man. And and I and I and I want to know that like I committed to something, you know, and and because because I, I think that like the sort of choose your own adventure, mathematic, you know, math, uh, mathifying of cinema and scienceifying of cinema is like an ultimately a bad thing. You know, like now it's, they are necessary things. You have to do test audiences. Even a small movie has to do test audiences and there is merit to that data. And, and, you know, and there's merit to knowing what movies have worked in screenwriting techniques and all this shit. But, but I, I think that as a result, uh, screenplays have become like uh, kit cars, you know, and, and, and I think that like, it's an art form, right? And so like, I would rather something make not perfect story sense, but be emotionally resonant than a movie that makes perfect sense to me, but I forget it as soon as I walk out of the fucking movie theater, right? You know? Yeah, yeah. And, and I can name a bunch of movies. I'm not going to because I want to don't want to be disrespectful. But there are movies that are like very well regarded that make perfect screenwriting sense. So you know, in terms of a main character with a clear goal and opposition to that goal, and that character changes by the end at the right time, and that, and yet you can't remember like what's your yeah. favorite scene from it, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's nothing worse than walking out of a movie and then like somebody asking you, even like an hour later, and be like, yeah. "How was it?" And you're just like fine I don't fine I don't remember really yeah yeah right yeah yeah so. you, you you want like the new thoughts the next day yes yeah. and 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 to be like a a, a bee in your bonnet kind of right like there, there's a movie called tyrannosaur um it's a, a english flick from like 10 years ago and you know it's one of the hardest films i've ever seen and and when i watched it it like fucked with me and i was like i can't watch this again for quite some time but I, no joke, I thought about it at least once every single day for a year until I watched it again. And I was like, God damn, that's like, that's the shit. That's the real thing, you know, like, and, and, and that's not necessarily like, I don't want to just like fuck with people and weird them out. Like I, I would also like to do the, you know, it's not, it's also nice to do the thing that is like Springsteen or, or or Tom Petty and part of people's every day and something they go to every fucking day, right? And but doesn't ruin like, them. If you're yeah. not going to do that, I'd rather fucking leave you with a mark, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So um, some numbers on Jay, not to gas you up too much, you've gotten 100 on Rotten Tomatoes to your name. You've what? also got a 90 on Rotten Tomatoes to your name. Oh, the Dragon movies are pretty well reviewed. Uh, those are not either. Of the So I, I figured... To up top of my head, if I was thinking Jay Baruchel, what's getting huge numbers from him? I would have guessed like Tropic Thunder. Yeah. Uh, mm. Tropic Thunder is an 82. It's Million... a very polarizing film. Right. That's 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 a perfect polarizing movie. A uh, Million Dollar Baby is uh, 90. Wow. Yeah. And Ice 90? Gardens. Yeah. Wait a second. Million, million Dollar Baby is 90. And Endgame is 90. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this podcast needs to be. It needs to be actors react to their movie versus 
crazy. Endgame. <laughs> it's, we always use Endgame as the other one. We're like, okay, so uh, you were in this. So you're like, really good. It was an 83 one versus. One best picture. Let's spin the wheel for a random other movie. Uh, wow. Endgame's a 94. What do you think of that? Wow. Do you know what the 100 is, though? That's the question. Well, I would have guessed Million Dollar Baby or How to Train Your Dragon. Uh, it's not This is the End. Um, no, but that would be would hilarious. Be it, that would be hilarious. The, the crumb holds death on its own, my friend, is a hundred <laughs> on a good, um, I do love the idea of of people of like a bunch of critics seeing this is the end, and then all of them coming away with like, "Well, that was great." That was like that's what movie ever. No, no, um, <laughs> right? It can't be almost famous. No, but that's oh shit, that's a good one too. But I'm not even, I'm only two scenes. So I don't even know. No, I have no idea. Why would it be? Uh, it's Ice Guardians, a uh, hockey documentary. Oh, that yeah. That, that's a good fucking movie. Yeah. So that's I should. Hundred. Yeah. That is, that is kind of shocking. All right. Let's get into the Dark Knight 2008. Uh, this was a Batman film for those who have not seen it. And Jay, I mean, I'm just interested in your perspective. I mean, obviously we've covered big comic and DC guy. Uh, what was, you said off the top, you went to see this like everybody else, but are you as like, holy fuck, the dark night as the average human is? No, I don't think so. Love it. I, 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 I love, 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 obviously, uh, Heath Ledger in that movie, you know, and, I, and I, I legit think that's like one of the great performances, full stop, w w without any kind of, asterisks or you know for, for a superhero movie for an action movie just period like you know I, I and I, I sincerely love it and I really loved that movie when I first saw it um and I think every scene that Heath Ledger is in in that movie is spectacular I think that movie is wicked I think absolutely everything else is just like not that strong and I I kind of um I rewatched the Nolan uh, like whole cycle or saga trilogy, whatever uh, last year with my um, wife, because I, I was sort of like, maybe because I remember loving number two and, and hating number three and mm -hmm. being like, was I right about both? Right. And um, yeah, I don't think three is close. Uh, uh, um, I agree I for what it's worth. I yeah. Really I don't agree. love it. Um, but I don't love uh, number two either. I, I, I think like Bale is an awesome Batman and that's a great Joker and their stuff is fucking awesome. Um, but I think ultimately the, the movie is like a pretty boring action movie. So wow. I like, uh, I love that take. Um, I, um, I love Bale as uh, Bruce Wayne. Although I'll tell you like up front, Pete knows I am not a I'm not super knowledgeable when it comes to superhero stuff. I'll see it for the purposes of our podcasts, and I sure. quite like a lot of them. But I I've just I didn't grow up super into Batman and all those things. Uh -huh. um, so generally, like I loved Batman. Um, I love Batman Returns was the movie when I was yeah, a it's kid, a wicked, just it's because a movie. that was it's like an awesome movie. That was the right one for my age and. I loved Billy Joel and I thought that Michael Keaton and Billy Joel were the same person because I was dumb. So like, I love that Billy Joel did a Batman movie. So I, is that one <laughs> does it dude river of dreams. Billy Joel looks a lot like Michael Keaton. You're, you're not, you're not wrong. <laughs> so I love a Batman musical just starring Billy Joel. <laughs> yeah. But it's, but it's early nineties, Billy Joel. Like it's, it's mailing it in Billy Joel. <laughs> That would be incredible. So everybody, th by the way, sorry, sorry, by how many people think River of Dreams is from a Disney movie? Every a lot of people think it's from a soundtrack to a Disney cartoon. And then, yeah, anyway, it sounds like a it does sound a hundred percent like it sound, it would dude. That was <laughs> everybody has like the the soundtrack to their childhood and everything. Legitimately, the first album I remember knowing front to back with, like my obviously my mom is a mom, so she fucked with Billy Joel. And I remember when River of Dreams came out in 1993, that was just on all the time. So uh, anyway, I, my Batman movie was Batman Returns and Keaton, I think also a much better yeah. Br Bruce Wayne than he was a, a Batman, but he's my oh, yeah. favorite one for sure. Uh, so when I guess when I watch these movies, I'm a little more drawn to the Bruce Wayne aspect than I am to 
Batman. So I love uh, I, I love Bale as a Bruce Wayne. I think as a Batman, obviously, it's been covered, uh, distracting, right? Yeah, in in ways, uh, you know, it. it oh, the was, voice you don't like the voice. Yeah, the voice is is a little wild. I, I like I, Seth I, Rogen I as the voice, <laughs> as, like when in Neighbors when they're t- pissing and doing the voices of Batman. I I dig it. I I think he sticks the landing. Like I to me, but that's a that's a purely fucking taste kind of thing, right? You know, Certainly. Like, there's the shit we were just talking about about like making a choice that could alienate as much as resonate kind of you know and and like that's what hardy does in number three i I would argue to much less (laughs) success uh (laughs) but uh but yeah i because i always was like it was the first time it addressed a, a problem i didn't know i had as a kid which was like it was always there was like there was a suspension of disbelief required the the like batman equivalent of oh superman clark candace's glasses yeah. is like he sounds exactly like fucking bruce wayne how does everybody who knows bruce wayne not know it's him just you know like if i showed up in a batman outfit you know it was me <laughs> right like so i i dug that they at least found a that, that there was like a thing a decision he made you know to, that he made a yeah, and there was there's a very distinct difference I think between Bale as as Batman and Bale as Bruce Wayne. Like yeah. I think that both of those things are on opposite ends. I did find it interesting, and I don't know if I've I ever kind of thought about it like this until this recent rewatch. Is like it and it and it's probably um, because of like what Batman has become recently in being like a. I feel like in the last the last iterations of Batman have been very dark, very like gritty and like Bruce Wayne as a tortured soul. Yeah. Um, and this one doesn't quite it, it doesn't yeah. in ways. But but uh, Christian Bale is so cocksure as as Bruce Wayne in these movies that, um, you know, it's it's a drastic difference to the Bruce Wayne that we've seen in in the newer editions. Absolutely. No, he, he's definitely doing the old school playboy kind of thing. Yeah, know? right, right. And, and, and which is all just a, take a, a riff on the Scarlet Pimpernel, which is kind of the first masked uh, hero before, you know, not in comics, it was in a, it was a proper book, but yeah, pretending to be a, a, a fop, a, a, a spoiled rich kid who's clueless and dumb. And, and, and then, you know, all of that being an effort to sort of just like, yeah, you know, disarm people and then behind closed door, you know, Behind closed doors, you're the, the exact polar opposite of that. So he's like, no, he's he really, he, there's no kind of like, that's a very good point when you say that, because his is definitely more on a scale of like gritty to campy, his is closer to that, you know, which is strange because the Nolan take is so fucking like bleak and centered, right. and, mm. you know, you, you know, it's, it's an oddly light choice for it to, for, for, cause like those movies are always like famously dreadfully serious and so no fun yeah. and all that shit. Right. You know? And um, so it's kind of, yeah, but yeah, it's a, it's a completely different place than, than, than where, where they've taken him for my money. I, I think that like both make sense. Um, I, I tend to lean towards the kind of heavier one but again, that's a taste thing. Like I like Daniel Craig's Bond too, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and, and and I dug the Timothy Dalton Bond and that's kind of the same kind of idea, which is like, you know, um, pl- played straight ahead and, and, and not sort of tongue in cheek and not acknowledging the audience really, you know? And, 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 I, and I actually think Batman is the like, one of the characters you, you, you can actually get away with that because he's sort of so haunted by shit. Although mm-hmm. like, I, I've had this nagging sensation the past few years that like, <clears throat> I was like, wait a second, you know. So when I was a kid, the the idea of someone murdering my parents, I'm like, I'll fucking get them later too, you know. Like, but now as I'm like 40, like, mercifully my mom's alive, but I'm like, if my parents were killed when I was 10, would my grudge still be that strong at 40? <laughs> you know, like, like <laughs> would I, would I, you know, channel it. like your kids got killed that's your mom that's your mom and dad when you were before puberty like you 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 went off to university life kicked the shit out of you like i'm sure other shit got like boy that's a hell of a one to get fixated on um but but, 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 i mean that's uh, it's your entire life it is literally a hell of a one but i know what you're saying 
Like, they, like you, you've been dumped again, like d- d- apples and oranges, but like, since you're right, you've been dumped. You've like been other people have died. Yeah. Other people have died since, <laughs> you know, like, like, you know, yeah, I, I get it. You'd have a chip on your shoulder. You, you'd be fucked. But like, would you still be talking about it? Mm. I do love, I do love the idea of, of one of the Batman villains just being like, your parents died. Get over get it. Over it. <laughs> you big like, fucking baby. <laughs> I've got to T.O. this and say, like, by the way, anybody watching or listening, uh, especially those of you, the Patreon people, uh, um, you're more important. Um, <laughs> if your parents were murdered when you were a kid, I'm get you are not expected to be over it. I'm sorry. You, you, you are allowed to unpack that however you see fit. <laughs> uh, I mean, Pete's observation, though, about how about the um, Christian Bale Batman is a great one because there is like more not to use a buzzword, but this is a thing that exists like that. There's like more toxic masculinity in Christian Bale's Bruce Wayne than there are in the earlier iterations, which you would think like 88, 89 and shit like that was that was like prime time for that sort of stuff. But Bruce like has the interaction with harvey and rachel when he does like the he says like oh we went to the ballet and he's yeah. like huh, so you're into ballet i'm like oh damn bruce this is gonna sound so fucking lame and and like whatever but like in in the bail movies like bruce wayne is the costume more than than ah, batman is fair. the costume yeah that's a, yeah. think so yeah 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 like, absolutely yeah. I fucking hate myself for saying that. No, I mean, like, I mean, I've never for, thought of it that way. But, but very, like, yeah, that's a hokey he, thing to say. But but you're right. It's a, you're spot like on that's his shield. Thing. Like that's yeah, that that's is, him hiding who he is. Oh Correct. yeah, him as Batman is is the real guy. That that's him not pretending to be anything. Bat, Bruce Wayne is the facade. I think that that's a, I think that's spot on. This obviously has a loaded cast. You know that from the jump when the opening scene is Bill Fickner who is a favorite of this podcast. Uh, Jay, just a question. Did Kim Coates ever bring yes, him around course. the set of Goon? Yeah! <laughs> no, okay. no, so he was never on the set. He never came to the set, but but like, yeah. When, when we, we circled around each other both times. You know, like, like when you're making a fucking hockey movie, one of the like sort of ways you start is like, okay, who's a good actor that likes hockey? Right. And and he's on every one of those lists every single time. And then like the fact that him and Coates are actually boys is like crazy. Um, but like, yeah, before we knew Coates, Fickner was like one of the names that we were like, we should try to fucking get him in here. Yeah. Oh, dude, it's I love so much that those two are our friends. I mean, obviously they play similar roles and everything, but they're I don't know how we came across. I, I think it was we were watching Prison Break and uh, they're in scenes with each other, which yeah. is like confusing because they often um like you'd get those guys to do similar things but it's rare that they're actually both in the same scene and then just from like reading up it's like holy shit they're like the best of friends i love that i love that so much um but this is this is a pretty fucking loaded cast though yeah like the fact that they they, that like fickner is just you could have had anybody play that role, and they got Fickner because they can get Fickner and Eric Roberts as the yes. fucking mobster, and you know, yeah. and, and you know, um, he is yeah, understatedly was, great as that he mobster. He's fucking awesome, and he was always like, look, he the, the, the rub on Eric Roberts is never he's a shit actor. Like, like you know, pe- people sometimes only get the gigs that they're allowed to fucking act in, right? So he he he's in the movies that he got offered, right? But fucking strong ass actors he's never been bad you know mm-hmm. or uh, as an eff- as a uh, canadian are you offended that uh the way they paint the imposter batman in the beginning of the movie <laughs> is that they're wearing hockey pads oh that's right yeah oh yeah and he says hockey pads derisively doesn't he yeah, yeah yes exactly yeah. he says like uh in his voice i'm not <laughs> wearing hockey pads yeah like, yeah like um yeah fuck him <laughs> Like he's trashing the guy's fashion choice. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. Yeah. I wouldn't be caught dead in hockey pads. Yeah, yeah that's no the, shit. Uh, that's he's like also the... that, that movie is also like a good 
chunk of like neocon apologist propaganda with that fucking like all seeing that like surveillance tech that he has Mm -hmm. that he's like you know now i'll destroy it but i'm allowed to use it once because i'm you know now that means to an end and and just this once extreme you know eh, it's a very slippery fucking slope and that's always the fucking way it starts the patriot act that is gotham's patriot act correct correct i I find it so funny that that is the big device in that movie, like the big moral uh, question that you have watching that, like, are you okay with that? When that, that movie came out in No, you shouldn't be okay with that. That that movie came out in 2008 and people are like, oh, how do we feel about this? And obviously this is is like six years into the Patriot Act. When now though, our phones are spying on us and we know they are. And we're like, Oh yeah. Yeah. But I need to use the phone. Like we're just like, so okay with the fact that that shit goes on now. Whereas it's like, you're signing up for it basically. Right. Yeah. yeah. You're yeah. legitimately paying each month for it to do that. But that was like the big device in yeah. that movie of like, what if your phone could spy on you? Yeah. And now your phone is like, I'm spying on you. Is that okay? Yes. Please hit yes. yes exactly <laughs> like, as long right. as there are yeah, ads, are there ads? Yeah. If there's no ads. Yes. Spy. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're just seeing shit. You're just seeing commercials on your phone about shit that you just talked about. <laughs> like stuff you just texted somebody about. Like my my assistant, <laughs> she started seeing like I, I did these commercials up here for this bank up here called RBC and, and uh, Royal Bank. And there was this period where like the only ad she would ever see on Instagram or YouTube on if she used her phone or, or featured me. And then she was like, I think it's because I text you. <laughs> I'm like saying your name in like official like capacity on my phone a lot. Phones do do that. that. It's like it's I like oh that. you know Jay Bearshell. Yeah. Can I interest you in more Jay you Bearshell? Like commercials he's been in. Yeah. Do you want to buy Speed? He uh, <laughs> has that. <laughs> we heard recently that he owns that on uh, video. Um, there is a very weird existence of Jerry Maguire in the Batman universe and. I don't know. You know more about Batman than I do, Jay. But when the Joker says he doesn't want to kill Batman, he says, "Like, I no, I don't want to kill you. Like, I need you." Oh yeah, that's right. You complete me. And oh. when he says that, I'm like, ah, I don't know if like is he referencing Jerry Maguire? He certainly is. Not. Yeah, he absolutely. It's like a wink, wink. So, yeah. so there, he's making reference to it. Um, I. It's very funny to just I think about up, the Joker. Though, sitting down and watching, watching Jerry Maguire, Maguire and then being like, I'm going to use that. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one for later for Batman. <laughs> I So I looked up if there was anything to that and if Batman often references like other pop culture shit because I mean, speaking of slippery slopes, it's like, okay, well, if this exists, then all these other things exist. Apparently in the Batman Lego movie, they watch Jerry Maguire. Really? Oh, yeah. What? So they're for real. So Jerry Maguire is legitimately part of, at least as of like the last 12, 13 years. Okay. Part so of the, the Batman. You universe. like that? Are you, are you, are you interested in shared universes, gentlemen? Um, because, <laughs> yeah. Because, okay. So, okay. First off, that's really weird. Um, that's, that's really, really weird. Um, so, not that anybody would ever notice or care. Uh, and I only bring it up. Ha- had you not mentioned that Jerry Maguire and Batman like are in the same like shared universe um, or that Jerry Maguire exists as a movie in the DC universe, um, the Goon movies and a show I did called Man Seeking Woman and a horror movie I made called Random Acts of Violence, all of those are in the same universe technically. Uh, if you care, I can walk you through. Tanaka is in Goon. So in in Man Seeking Woman, we go to a hockey game in season two, uh, the one where me and Eric Andre are obsessed with the same girl, uh, Rosa, that I work with. We we go to a hockey game with her, and the game, the two teams are playing, is the Halifax Highlanders and uh, and the McBain Highwaymen. And those are two teams from Goon 2. We had just got done shooting Goon 2 in the same okay. fucking production team. And a lot of the same crew from Goon 2 were on Man Seeking Women Season 2. Um, and so we just used those sweaters. When we made Goon 2, 
we named, we had to come up with a bunch of more, you know, teams. And so we came up with this team called the McBain Highwaymen, knowing that we had already a script called Random Acts of Violence about a guy that kills people on a highway who, from a town called McBain. So we made this as like an inside joke for ourselves, knowing full well that our horror thing might never happen. And we had to name the team something anyway. Um, but then we did make our movie. And in Random Acts of Violence, I drink the same brand of beer that Josh drinks in Man Seeking Woman, which is Schmortz Ice, this <laughs> shitty, this shitty beer. <laughs> so I drink Schmortz in Random Acts, the Mc, and the killer in Random Acts is from McBain. Goon Two is Highlanders versus McBain Highwomen for one game, and we go see that in Man Seeking Woman. So that's a perfect. That's incredible! Movie. Holy shit! That's amazing. Uh, I realized recently I was uh, rewatching undeclared and a movie that pete and i often discuss without having ever seen is the last boy scout oh. i always forget the name of it. i always forget the name of it but i have described the scene the opening scene to pete about a thousand times and like i don't know if like maybe you didn't believe like the first 10 times that it existed because it sounds like the craziest scene in the world and one day we finally like looked it up watched it's the scene insane. and it's we've so talked cool. about the we've talked about the movie a million times haven't even thought of watching it, but um, I'd seen Undeclared a bunch of times, but I was rewatching it recently. And do you know what I'm talking about? Of course. And yeah, you and uh, 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 what's, uh, why can't I think of your name in the, the show? Oh, Steven. Uh, so yeah, Steven and Lizzie are finally having like their first like big <laughs> date night. And you say, I'm going to be, I, I have the most romantic night planned for her. I'm going to make her chicken parmigiana. And then we're going to watch the last Boy Scout. And when I fucking saw that like two weeks ago, I fucking died that that was the movie that a college freshman is going to show their girlfriend. That was an ad lib. I wrote that. It was well, that's that's awesome. Awesome. That was an ad. No, they wrote that in because they heard me fucking talking about it. That's what it was. Yeah. Uh, that was, I remember mentioned in talking about it in earnest and they were like the last boy scout with damon wayans and bruce willis i was like yeah she liked that movie. <laughs> every year and i like i still do i said it's a it's a spectacular film yeah that's um uh, that's, yeah, that's the one where martin comes that's where martin star comes to visit me yeah great great episode uh a lot of freddie got finger <laughs> references <laughs> in there yeah. And none of the other people fucking care about. It. They're like, yeah, hey, yeah, go talk to that girl. She likes Freddie's fingers. Like, yeah, he go. He calls it. He calls it radical anti comedy. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Harvey Dent. I just we'll we'll do some quick notes on uh, yeah. Harvey Dent. Um, a when he says when he takes the fall for being Batman, I just can't believe that nobody's like no, not, not a single follow up question. Yeah. He's like, no. oh, Batman. No one's like, uh, you fucking wish, man. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> there's, there's no like side by side pictures being like, ah, this doesn't that chin doesn't match up. There's no way. Yeah, no <laughs> shit. He also like I know that spoilers, uh, folks, I know he fucking kills people. But when he punches the woman officer in oh, the face, yeah. I am so appalled. <laughs> yeah, and same. again, like I know that he's like killing other people. Like, it gets into the whole thing of like how we consume art where like we love the sopranos where people like yeah, yeah. kill each other but yeah. if you say something that's like really distasteful you're like oh fuck that person yeah, yeah this yeah. is like it's when he when he when he's punching the the cop i'm like oh my a real examination God. of where we draw the line i suppose yeah yeah no shit that's a very good point uh yeah, a harvey note that. that i have is uh just a big time simp in this movie for rachel like yeah <laughs> big simp. yeah big. like it seems not that there's anything wrong with that. Hmm. He really likes her, but hey, scale it back a notch. She yeah, doesn't yeah, seem to like yeah. you as much as you like her. Yeah. Chill, chill a bit. Leave, leave something to the imagination. Right. Yeah. 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 Especially when she's doing the, the you're on like week three of the proposal and yeah. you're still wait like the, the trade request will expire in like three hours and you have to like keep resubmitting it because she's uh, she's still thinking about it um i guess we should also talk of course about heath ledger i mean you said that this is one of the great it's an amazing great performances ever absolutely amazing performance and 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 in a you know uh and in a role that like so he's now the nicholson right like anybody after nicholson he'd be like you're out of your fucking mind playing joker what are you crazy how are you gonna you know like and and he found a thing and he found a way in that was like 
yeah, completely its own thing. And, and, um, but now he's the thing. Right. Yeah. And, and, um, and I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And, and it's hilarious. Cause he got a bunch of shit when he, when he did take it, people were like, well, no, I guess he didn't get a bunch of shit, but they, the, the Nolan got a bunch of shit being like, what are you doing? Cause yeah, he yeah, Ledger, the Joker, Heath Ledger right. wasn't in that sort of no, you're echelon, right. I guess people yeah, doubted right. his ability to play the character because he was mm-hmm. like, for all intents and purposes, he was like the romantic comedy guy. He was the yeah, heartthrob. Broke back. Yeah. So like he there was a lot of pushback on him taking that role and trying to put his own spin on Nicholson. Yeah. And now he he now he owns the Joker more oh, or less. Uh, Ten times over, you know, like and, and I think there's honorable mentions like I think, you know, um at in, in, least in the animated world, Mark Hamill, you know, has played Joker for 30 fucking years and he's amazing at it, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and um, I think, uh, you know, I, I, I think that, you know, that there's, there's a place for the Jared Leto one, you know, and, and uh, I, 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 and I think Joaquin's Phoenix is uh, performing, like, that's a, that's a super interesting way to do it. Um, I don't, I don't love that movie. And I, you know, and I, and I, and I, and even if I did, um, nobody has done anything to kind of touch what Ledger has done. I don't think. Right. Um, I'll, I'll quickly race through the, the tomato scores of the other Batman movies. Batman is 71. Batman Returns is 80. Batman Forever is 38. Batman and Robin is a gentleman's 12. Uh, from the Nolan trilogy, Batman Begins is 84. This is fucked. The Dark Knight is 94. And The Dark Knight Rises is 87. I believe. Okay, so, uh, so you said Batman. Batman's 71. Now that is the Tim Burton with That's, Michael Keaton. Yeah. 71. And and the the Bane, the Bane thing is 87. Come on, man. Like <laughs> Come on. I I think so. My guess is that a lot of people and probably myself included, maybe you guys went into the Dark Knight Rises being like, OK, Christopher Nolan has you're in. Had, yeah, right. Like you've got a grip on this. The Dark Knight was fucking awesome. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Even still, I saw the Dark Knight Rises and I was like, that wasn't that good. And and it wasn't like a, hey, that wasn't as good as The Dark Knight because I don't think that anybody expected it to be or that it could be. I saw The Dark Knight Rises and I was like, this just wasn't that good. It's not a great film. It's just not a great film. Yeah. So I like Dark Knight. I like Dark Knight Rises more than uh, Batman Begins, but um, I, I also think that The Dark Knight is a, is a, a, a great movie. Do we want to? Uh... I th- so I, I I'll say it. Like I fucking love the Dark Knight. Still love yeah. the Dark Knight. Every time I watch it, makes me very excited. Every uh-huh. time I watch it, I'm like, damn, that movie fucking rocks. Yeah. It is one of my favorite movies ever. Like, and I don't oh, care. If, and so I don't. I don't the care. Shot, I mean, the, the sh- oh no, please. Yeah. I I love it too. The, the shot of um, the shot of the Joker hanging. Uh, oh, that's the building. Like- yeah, one of the great Joker moments, that conversation, we're, we're going to do this. I have a feeling you and I are going to do this a lot and you know, are going to do this forever. You know, like that's a such a great meta moment. You know, I, I also think that like um, that fucking car chase is like dope, you know, like, yeah. like it goes hard as fuck with the with the motorcycle and, and the uh, the Mack truck spinning up on it. It's like I when I saw that in the theater, that's like. I literally leapt out of my seat and I wasn't the only one. There was like a bunch of us who just got out and fucking like, you know, like we, we yeah. like a concert. Yeah. Yeah. Up. yeah. yeah. yeah the, that, and it's one of my notes is that like that scene is done so many favors by the fact that there's like very minimal score to it. Yeah. And it's just kind of like, you're living in that moment without it being hyped up by any other elements other than just the way that it's shot and the action itself. Yeah, no, because he's doing that like atonal thing that starts and it starts in the very first moment of the film mm-hmm. during that, that that heist, you know, and, and and so it's like he's just kind of like, yeah, um, yeah, holding there's there are themes that eventually come, but the Joker thing is um kind of just yeah, atonal noise piled on top of each other, 
you know, and uh, and it does and it does like a really really interesting thing, and and that became kind of the Nolan Zimmer sort of signature, right? You know, uh, to a to a ridiculous parodyable extent <laughs> in Inception, but uh, um, but that, you know that's yeah, it works it works impeccably. But I mean, yeah, I mean, think of that relative to I mean, you're getting Danny Elfman in yeah. the 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 early the ones, furiest. which the is furiest, yeah. Yeah, which is, I mean, could, could not be more different. Um, okay, now, I mean, at this point, we uh, just kind of go around and we say which we feel is the better of these two movies, which we like more. Um, obviously, that the conversation is always more important than the actual winners and losers, so don't feel too bad if you pick one over the other. Uh, I, I don't know which actually you'll say is higher, Jay, so let's do you last. Uh-huh. Pete? Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go with the dark Knight just because like, again, it's one, it's, I love it. It's one of my favorite movies ever. Um, just in terms of rewatchability and it's a two and a half hour movie that I know you said, you think that it's boring. I don't see it. Like I, I, I feel like it, it operates at a pretty breakneck pace and, uh, like I love pretty much all parts of it. I don't think that it's a perfect movie by any sense, but I love all the things that it does. And it's a two and a half hour movie that feels like it flies by for me. And that's crazy. And, you know, I, I really like speed for what it is, but I think that speed doesn't hold a place in my heart as much as the dark Knight does. And I, I think that speed is more replaceable than the dark Knight in terms of overall impact and just the way that I hold it. So I've been doing the you order while I make my final decision on what I'm going to order type of thing, because mm-hmm. I go back and forth between these two movies. I think that speed is more exciting, but dark Knight. I mean, speed just doesn't have the performances that the dark Knight has, even though like I truly do love Dennis Hopper in speed. Ultimately, I think I just barely lean dark Knight. I think I go dark Knight. I think that's fair. I think like, so do I, just because one movie has Heath Ledger as Joker and the other doesn't. And I love that performance and I love everything about it. And when I say it's boring though, I want to clarify, it's not, to me, it's not a pacing issue. I do think it is, I think it is paced pretty fucking um, uh, quickly uh, uh, and, and spryly. I, for, for me, the, the boring is the, um, the lack of anything to connect to in the, in the, like, I don't care about the Dent and Rachel shit. And, and, I, and like, and I, and I, and I care even less about the kind of Lucius, you know, like all of the stuff with the um, surveillance shit, you know, like I, so that's what I mean by boring. It's okay. not a, it's not a pace thing. It's a, it's a content thing or it's a, you know, and, and so like, um, but I would argue that because of its simple, its best moments are way better than Speed's best moments. Um, as simple as that for me. Yeah, okay. well put. Uh, Jay, thank you so much for hanging oh, out with you. us. We're going to have you back when we do Mighty Please. Ducks versus The Last Boy Scout. I believe <laughs> those are similarly <laughs> rated. <laughs> Although I feel, yeah, I mean, you, you would you would go last Boy Scout in a in a walk. Oh, right? I don't even need to. Yeah, like it's 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 very very clear. No, find some poorly reviewed ones. Like like I'll tell you, there's there's some that are like history regards as real stinkers that I love. Like like fucking Batman versus Superman. Like like that's a movie that I is one legit one of my favorite films. Like the way that you talk about Dark Knight. Pete is how I talk about Batman versus Superman. Like all the things that people hate about it, I don't see. I, and and like and it's and every time it delivers the same thing for me. So anyway, so yeah, uh, they, 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 like let's find one that people fucking hate on. Oh yeah, those that's what's coming. Those are up. coming. Yeah, yeah. Out of the gate, you're like, <laughs> all right, let's make sure we hit like great movies, prestige movies, and then what? Because we can. Uh, the only thing we kind of do with movies is find ridiculous, insane movies and have like we. Like I feel like a lot of podcasts would do find silly movies you never heard of and dick around with them. Uh, so we know that we're capable of doing that, but we've been trying to get oh, some, well, of the, some of the good ones, but those are coming. The messes are absolutely coming, yeah. but this was a blast, dude. We yeah. uh, Thank you. super cool to chat with you. Thank you for having me guys. This has been lovely. And, and um, yeah, please, please have me back. Absolutely. Please come back. All right. I will. We'll do it.